Hi, all y'all. This is the girl, George, and the Dragons Radio Show. We're right on the summer solstice here in San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, for your summer solstice, we've got one of the owners of uh, The Matrix, which I think he started owning it about this time many, many years ago, 50 years ago. So here we go with... uh, Gary L. Jackson. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? So when did you take over the the Matrix? Just a little background. June 20th, 1967. But for a more formal background, Peter Abram and I were students at the University of California, Berkeley, and in the 60s, and that's where I met Peter, and that's how I got involved in the Matrix, and... Peter managed the Matrix about seven months before um, before we took over ownership. And me being his pal, of course, then he hired me to be the bartender. And eventually we became partners. And we took over the Matrix on June 20th, 1967, officially transferring the title from the U.S. Peace Corporation, of which the Jefferson Airplane was part of the organization. Peter Abram, he's a PhD candidate at Berkeley in psychology, and I was a bachelor when we were going to school at Berkeley, and and Peter had this, he loved to take groups, and Ray Anderson, the first manager of the Matrix, uh, allowed Peter to come in there from 1960, early 66, to tape record all the bands, and um, and that's when I met Peter, and then he brought me to the Matrix. He, he said, come with me, we're going to go. And and we went, we went forever. So, it so like, he, and we, he's, and, not, he's not a musician, he's, he's, he's a manager of bands and, and stuff like that? Well, no, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a uh, professional student that had, the desire to tape record bands. He, he, he oh. it's like collect, Peter collects live tape recordings. Richard Milhouse Nixon tape recorded everything in the White House. Peter Abram recorded everything that we did in the Matrix. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. So, so what bands played there at the Matrix? Well, where, where should we begin? On the thirteenth, nineteen sixty-five, the Matrix. Uh, Country Joe and the Fish, uh, Quicksilver, The Grateful Dead, Big Brother and the Holding Company, Steve Millerbrand, Santana. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> I mean, who have I left out? They're going to be mad at me. Charlatans? Oh, the Charlatans is my favorite. Of course the Charlatans <laughs> played there. Uh, and that's where I first met the Charlatans was on the University of California, Berkeley campus when I... Uh, Worked for a concert producer, uh, Barry Olivier, and we did the Charlatans in the uh, Greek Theater on May 21st, 1966. Uh, I mean, there's just a lot of bands that play there. Just so, where are you? Top from of Camel. I mean, where are I'm you sorry? from originally, Gary? Well, I'm a I'm a Mormon from the great state of Utah, and because of my father in politics. I was able to get out of Utah, the great state alive. My father was a physical officer, three military bases in Utah, in northern Utah, the Dugway Proving Grounds, the Deseret Chemical Depot, and the Tula Ornance Depot. Born on the Tula Ornance Depot on July 25, 1945. Uh, that's during the war. <laughs> and I lived on the Desert Chemical De- Depot military base until 1950. So the first five years of my life, I lived 
on the mill. He said, when my father could finally move off in 1950, he moved to Tula, Utah. And I, for a couple of years, but my father in the military got into a beef and he got fired from his job. And the <laughs> congressman and the two from the great state of Utah came to my father's aid. They were Republicans, Arthur V. Watkins being the leader. We had to get out of Utah. <laughs> and you are kicked out of Utah. What happened? Church <laughs> Ab Benson, Mormon Church, who happened to be the Secretary of Agriculture during the uh, Dwight David Eisenhower administration, got my father transferred to Washington, D.C. in 1955. My father hated the East Coast. I mean, not hate, hatred. And so he got transferred to become the fiscal officer of the Western Region of the United States Forest Service. And I arrived in San Francisco on November 15th, 1957. 57. So your whole family came out here, right? Well, just my, just my brother and I with my parents. I still have 32 cousins and 64 second cousins, and uh, <laughs> very few of them have visited me. <laughs> so it's just you and your brother, the kids? Well, my there's two of you? Right, they came to San Francisco with my parents. That's correct. Yeah, there's only two of you, though, you and your brother, right, of the kids? Well, my sister's deceased, and unfortunately, oh, uh, yeah, Marion well, uh, Our age, died. you know, we lose a lot of them. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, my sister was 14 years older than, I, than myself. She was born in 1931, and my brother was born in 1937. He's eight years older than me, and I, like I said, I was born in 1945. Okay, so you came out to San Francisco, and, and you started going to college. Which college? Berkeley? Well, first of all, it's more important that you start off walking before you run. So I went to AP Giannini Junior High School for three years from 1957 to 1960. And when I graduated AP Giannini, I went to Abraham Lincoln High School where I graduated in June of 1963. Then I went to five colleges after I graduated from Lincoln High School. And a AA from City College, a Bachelor of Science in Accounting from the University of California at Berkeley, San Francisco State University, I got an MBA in Accounting, Golden Gate University, I got an MBA in Taxation, and I always wanted to be Freemason, so I went to law school. <laughs> so you're a lawyer, I got too? A J, I got a JD, I got a Doctorate of Laws. In 1980. So, so okay. Let's get back to the Matrix. At the Matrix, you you manage some of the bands too. You managed any band because you have to have an artist manager's license in the state of California. Oh. Yeah. But but the next best thing that you can be after you manage them is the lawyer. <laughs> and then the next best <laughs> thing is if you can be the accountant. And if you're the accountant, the lawyers need the accountants because the accountants do all the work and the lawyers make all the money. And it was because of my association in, in the matrix that, you know, I started off walking before I could run. And I made all these contacts in the matrix and working for Bill Graham and what knew that I had to be to become a CPA, I had to open my own CPA office I did in 1972 and pretty soon all these bands and roadies and <laughs> they were my clients well that's great so you work for Bill Graham what did you do with Bill Graham well I, I did a lot of things and the first thing I did with Bill Graham was actually without him even knowing it to, I'm not, on October 25th, 1966, Jefferson Airplane appeared uh, in Gray Slick and Spencer Dryden, and it was a four-night, four-four shows, and 
Bill was there, and he was up on the stage. With his grand oh, I loved Bill for, Graham. I I liked him. I knew him. He was well. Very I, nice. I I later had to call Bill Graham that same year, 1967, that we uh, Peter and I transferred the usher because we produced Grace Lake and the Great Society on on the Columbia Records and be dared to tempt after we got Grace Slick and Jerry Slick Bill Graham and asked him for permission to produce to produce the record and uh, the column and in the course when I said if he said okay go ahead he was managing the airplane then Graham to get to Fillmore and we did on uh, June 16th 1968 did the Matrix benefit. Three years later, he hired, two and a half years later, he hired me as the last manager, the second and last manager of Film West in 1970. In 1970? Or 1971. 71. So you see, for all that period of time, I had a relationship. Because the Fillmore moved to uh, the Carousel Ballroom sometime around then, didn't it? In the well, it actually That's moved. I believe or it was uh, July fifth, nineteen sixty-eight, and it closed July fourth, nineteen seventy-one. How long was it open? How long did it last? Well, it was it was open. Um, there was two locations. The the, the first. Matrix lasted till about 1971. It opened August 13th, and it closed in the fall of 1971 when I was working for Bill. Then it had a brief stint on Broadway uh, where it became Keystone, San Francisco, right across the street from Blue Hay Garden. So it, it, it was, you know, it was there six years, six and a half years. That was a good run. So, so where else? Oh, who did, did you know uh, Chet Helms? Did you work with him? I was Chet Helms' accountant, and oh, cool. I did the last two family <laughs> for him and his partner Bob Cohen, and uh, I actually got Chet and Bob refunds. You're, you're making a movie now, aren't you? Aren't, aren't you making a movie about? Well, the we have the, I have the benefit of having a good friend, Jen and Jennifer Andrews who decided that she wanted to make me a, or reinvent my life. <laughs> and so <laughs> and so I I definitely am pleased with that someone recognizes the, the things I've done and and so her documentary is in process and hopefully uh, you know I told her you're not going to finish this project till I'm dead so she's young <laughs> enough well, this. <laughs> well, the problem is you need to have financing up front. You know, if she had fifty grand uh, in, in her bank account right now, and she wanted to go out and go crazy, uh, uh, you know, she could do a lot of things. The problem is you got to have money for production alone. I mean, tapes and photographs and this and that, and to do all this stuff. All my life, for sixty-eight years, you know. Uh, to come down to a 20 second commercial, you know. <laughs> I mean, she's, I mean, she's, anyway. She's Did you save any of the videos and stuff? Did you save any videos? Well, we really, the, the, only thing we, the only thing we did in the Matrix was uh, was tape record everything. Yeah. Audio, Later so there on, there is well, no videos. There's no actual videos in the Matrix. It was, that was very premature and uh, yeah, and, and very premature and so you know most of the things back then were handheld cameras and stuff. I mean, yeah, they, I know. and then they got to transfer the tape and there's production costs. So, the, the, and the only thing you could do that were videos is is like some of the things like you've posted is when KT uh, KQED does interviews. Uh, yeah, uh, they do interviews about the Matrix or, or Bill Graham or Santana or Grateful Dead, 
and so you needed you need to have the cameras. Uh, and as you know, back in those days, color cameras were very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I and, know. <laughs> and if you did, and, and it was, and we were too cool for school, so we couldn't do it in black and white. Everything had to be in color. But anyway, it's they did a movie back. about us. They did a movie about us, but I've I've saved video over the years of me on stage that people have have made and they gave me copies of. So I had a lot of live footage in that, so I, I stuck that in there. So mostly it's well, when I they made it. Originally, would... it was talking heads, you know, just people talking about us in, in the old days, and I added the video. But it helps if you got video for it. Right, but even remember, even back in in in, in our little heyday, I mean, after we got through with dinosaurs, then we got big, oh, other dinosaurs. I mean, there was VHS and uh, uh, the Japanese. You know, you had to, you had to, you had to have two different video camera. I mean, video uh, tape recorders, one for VHS and. One for the Japanese version. So. Beta, I think it, it was called. <laughs> right. Well, see, that's how old we are. See, even I know what it is, but I can't remember it because because all that stuff is in the inventory somewhere. Well, I had a, a TV show on Community Access TV from about 1978 to about 83. So I got a lot of the people on that, Mike Wilhelm and Blue Cheer and all of them. I got because oh, they were going that's through very town cool. at the you time. Were very, I got, you're very cool. But the only other person I know is Pete Slauson, and you, if you haven't touched base with him, yeah, he's a he's an underground freak in San Francisco and a great guy. I mean, he's got videos of uh, stuff, you know. But I would like to ask, may I ask you a question now? Yeah. You mentioned Community Access TV. Was that Channel 26 yeah. in San Francisco? Well, I, it, I, I'm it, i I'm in Berkeley. So I, it was actually out of San Leandro. Same Andrew, thing, only different. Because they had a new studio that was colored colored cameras and shit. We had like three cameras and a control booth where at the time in San Francisco they only had a little room and one little black and white camera. So I filmed it in San Leandro and then I played the tapes in in, in San Francisco. So I had the only colored show on the station at that time cool. in San Francisco because I filmed it in San Leandro which had a brand new state of the art studio. So there. <laughs> well, that's cool. But so that's I got cool. some you great, see, great tapes in my so, 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 See, one of, one of my fantasies with the community access, uh, when I was fantasizing, was about doing the same thing, only a little differently. I was thinking more like coffee radio with Jim Gabbard, you know, going down there and saying, look, let me do a let me let me host a show on uh, on on your show late night like Larry Miller used to do on KNPX with the underground radio and and KSAN come in here at night and then I could do my best to see if I could dig up some of these people around the Bay Area and we could come in and we could talk about the Matrix and we can talk we believe me if I got people in the studio on camera. With, then we could talk about a lot of things. <laughs> be, well, be I know fun. a I know a guy over here in Berkeley that that has a community access show. He has the cameras and shit. Maybe I could hook him up with you, and you guys could do something together. Because he's been taping right. all the open mics over here, so I'm sure he'd love to get a hold of some of the old acts from before and work with you. So I'll, I'll hook him up with you. His name is Slim. He goes by Slim. I'll hook him up with you. And oh, maybe that'd you be guys cool. can work now. Because he's already well, on Community the, Access TV. You just, you know, you fan, remember, the Matrix is a fantasy. I mean, and I had my own fantasies inside the Matrix, the womb. Remember, the Matrix is the womb. So, but what happens is you have fantasies and you throw out ridiculous concepts, and then one day it happens. It's not so ridiculous after all. So. Just exploring well, it's all, uh, the all unknown. about connecting with other people that are doing the same thing too, so so that you can you know build on it, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what uh, you see. I'd rather so maybe we can get something doing, going. Instead of doing tax returns, you know, I'd rather I'd rather 
you know, have uh, I'd rather have uh, the X-rated show in the back of the uh, back of the bus, and then everything that's straight could be up front here in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have you talked to anyone down at at um, the San Francisco Community Access TV? Not really, because it, it, it's one of those things. When I was exploring the unknown uh, in the eighties, I it just it, it just the time wasn't right. And uh, but but aside, aside from talk, I I need like a Jennifer, you know, someone a front person because I'll talk to anyone, but I don't want to make I don't want to be put put on hold for two hours. And have lunch with a secretary's lunch, and I, you know, I mean, I've been through Hollywood, I've been through New York. And all I want to do is direct contact. So I need a front person to stay on the line and write the letters. So I always write letters first before I before I deal with people. Usually, I always wrote a letter and stating, you know, what I was up to, and mailed it, and then two or three days later with a follow-up phone call, and then they knew what I was talking about. If they wouldn't talk to me, then they weren't interested. I didn't need to talk to them because they weren't going to talk to me. I need a front person to do those kind of things. I mean, I just can't call and say, Hi, I'm Gary L. Jackson. <laughs> well, I'll hook you up with Slim because, like I said, he's already on Community Access TV, and he would know all the ins and outs and stuff, so he might be able to help you. Well, politics or is the way if anyone else things. is listening to this that's connected with it, get a hold of you, you know, so. Well, I, I would remind yeah. everybody about one of my ventures uh, into this uh, realm is an experience that happened in the Matrix when Peter Abram and I uh, were managing the Matrix in about April or could have been May, about May 14th, 1967, I mean, we we recorded a, a band called The Sparrow in The Matrix, and it was 2 o'clock, and we shut the joint down. And at 50 Green Street at KMPX, Larry Miller let us in, and we went upstairs. And so we played The Sparrow, recorded live, hot off the press kind of concept. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here it is, live from The Matrix, The Sparrow. And... Larry Miller's sister station at that time, and I say Larry Miller because he was the first, uh, had a sister station called KMPC in Los Angeles. And so he made a dub of the tape, and he said that the dub of the tape down to KMPC. And then the next month, Sparrow broke up. and But they're playing his tapes, and... Gabriel Meckler from ABC Dunhill Records heard the Matrix tapes and he went out and found John Kay and all the rest of the band and he put the band back together again because they had moved from San Francisco to L.A. and then he called him Steppenwolf and signed him to ABC Records and the rest is history. So, so that's where Steppenwolf you do, you think, So whatever happens, see, whatever you do, you never know the power of what you can do because one day you'll find out. Yeah, just just go for it. Yeah, go for your dreams, right? Well, you just yeah. like First I said, you we don't say try, we, try, we try young, again. <laughs> we were just young entrepreneurs, uh, you know, trying to make a living, you know, in a hostile environment, and uh, but we didn't let our goals were high, and our vision was focused and. We didn't let anything slow us down. Yeah, so so that was one of the first places on the film were in that area, right? The the Matrix. Well, the Matrix was you know prior to the Matrix, it was called the Honey Bucket, and uh, and then but Marty Dalen was playing up around the corner of the, at the Drinking Gourd on Union Street, and he had a band called Town Choir Folk Singers. When folk singers become rock singers. They come down to the Matrix, and Marty Dillon was the leader of the pack. And he put together the Jefferson Airplane with Paul Kanner, and the Matrix opened August 13, 1965, in Cal Hall. That, that, 
That's great. Okay, we are out of time. Thank you for calling. And anybody that's interested in getting involved in this project, please get a hold of Gary. Thank you, uh, Gary L. Jackson from The Matrix. This is Girl George and the Dragon Radio Show. Saying, see you later, alligator. Thank you for having me. Everybody.